Laser Reviews, welcome back. You know what? 35mm lenses like this Helios are making a strong comeback because they have a character to them that people are rediscovering that modern lenses seem to have lost. Problem is though, when you use a 35mm lens on a micro four thirds sensor camera, you get what they call the crop factor. You lose half of the light and half of the image circle that you would have gotten. So that's the purpose of this video. We're gonna be checking out the Roxen Focal Reducer. What it does is it concentrates the light, almost like a magnifying glass. It brings back most of the light and most of the image circle you would have lost. But the main question I'm constantly asked is, what about the image quality? Does it deteriorate? Is it worth putting something like this between your camera and your lens? Well, if you're curious, stick around. I'm gonna show you everything there is to know about the Roxen Focal Reducer. Stay tuned. At first glance, looking at the reducer, it is very basic. There's no buttons, dials, or switches on it. It's just a simple optic. Looking closer, you can see it is multi-coated. It's hard to tell though if there's more than one lens element in it. Actually, the reason I got the focal reducer in the first place was to complement my Helios 44-2 lens. It has a very unique swirly effect in the outer edges of the frame. And this focal reducer is a great way of bringing much of that back that would have been lost on this crop sensor camera. I actually had such a good experience with the focal reducer and the pictures coming out were so nice, I reached out and contacted Roxen and they actually sent me a second model in Pentax mount for my other older lenses. So this isn't a sponsored episode, but I wanna thank Roxen for providing that. One of the cool things about the focal reducer is it actually increases the light by one stop. It behaves like a magnifying glass, concentrating the light. And what that means is without the focal reducer in a low light environment, you might be topping out at 1 40th of a second shutter speed. With the focal reducer increasing the light, you could be now topping out at 1 80th of a second shutter speed. So that can mean the difference between a slightly blurry handheld shot versus an acceptably sharp handheld shot. And that's a big deal in low light environments. Actually, the main purpose of using a focal reducer is the way it brings back most of that focal area you would have lost. There's so many cool 50 millimeter and other focal lengths out there from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. But when you put that 50 millimeter on this micro four thirds sensor, it becomes 100 millimeter because of the crop factor. So it's not as practical indoors and also you're losing half of the light. So this focal reducer brings back most of it. It doesn't bring back 100%. And rather than me giving you a bunch of figures and calculations on what it does, I'd rather show you. I'm gonna show you a picture now and I'll flicker it back and forth with a dumb adapter and with the focal reducer. And it'll give you a good example of the field of view you can get back using it. Check it out. You know, the coolest thing about the focal reducer is actually not the focal reducer. It's that it exposes you to using so many lenses you've probably never heard of before with character you've never seen before. There's thousands of them out there, but not all old lenses are worth buying. So it makes sense to do some research. Look at pictures online, places like Flickr, to make sure you know what you're getting before you buy. All right, this is something important to know if you want to get into vintage lenses using a focal reducer. Focal reducers are made in many of the most common mounts, Canon, Nikon, Pentax, M42, and others. But there's a lot of vintage lenses out there that have strange mounts that we've never heard of before. So it's important to make sure that the focal reducer will fit that lens you're trying to get or at the very least, maybe there's an adapter to allow it to work on one of the focal reducers that are available. Very important to research that before you buy a vintage lens. One of the most common questions I'm asked when folks see photos I take with this focal reducer is what about the image quality? Does it deteriorate? Well, I've done a lot of tests and I really still can't see any deterioration that I can pick up on. A good way to explain it though is I also have a variable ND filter and I don't like to use it because I can immediately see a slight drop in sharpness and a slight color cast. 
but with this particular focal reducer I don't have any qualms of image quality with using it all right that is the lowdown on the Roxen slash Pixco focal reducer I forgot to mention earlier in the video it's the same product that sometimes comes under different brand names but as you can see it's very capable if you have any questions feel free to leave them below I'll also put a link in the description in case you want to get one of these yourself just keep in mind to get the correct one for the type of lenses you're going to be using I want to thank you again for watching this episode of Ray's Real Reviews and as always keep it real